But when we when we talking about your move, right? This is our last installment of your move. First, we talked about moving versus waiting, right? We always say wait on the Lord. Well, it's good to wait on the Lord, but we don't supposed to wait. You ain't going your couch and just sit there and relax, right? So week one, we talk about waiting versus moving. How you still got other areas in your life you can move in, right? But waiting on the Lord ain't just sitting back relaxing. There's still activity for you to do. And then last week, we talked about being quiet. A lot of us like to talk, but it's hard to talk and work at the same time. So some of us have to be quiet and listen so that we can know what we need to do. And today, after we built up on all this, is really what it really comes down to, people. And that's moving past your own doubt. Moving past your own doubt. And the one thing we have to realize is that sometimes you super Christians, you super holy fire folks, you great, great followers of Jesus and have been established in the word, sometimes you doubt. Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you guess. And if it can happen to the most solid foundational person who you look up to, then we know it can happen to anybody. We doubt. In fact, go to John chapter 20. And we're going to read 24 through 25. John chapter 20. And we're going to read 24 through 29. I should have said 29. It said, now Thomas, one of the 12, and he's one of the 12 disciples, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So this is after resurrection. Jesus came to the disciples, presented himself. But Thomas was missing. It said, so the other disciples told him, Right. Using their words, they told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and I put my hand inside his side, I will not believe. Now, look, look at what he he brought up. He brought up a good case. He didn't just say I need to see him for myself. I need to know it's really him. I need to put my finger in the holes, my hand in the side. And then, this is a disciple now. This isn't just a person. He goes on in verse 26. He says, a week later, now you would think this was their only conversation, right? But it says a week has passed by. I'm pretty sure they talked a little bit more about this, okay? A week has passed. His disciples, Jesus's, were in the house again. And Thomas was with them this time, okay? Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, went directly to Thomas, and he said, put your finger here. See my hands? Reach your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet still believe. So let's go back to think about what Thomas' mindset was. Now, notice they saw Jesus and say, Jesus came to us. So when you read this a little closely, Thomas wasn't saying they didn't see anybody. He didn't say, oh, man, y'all, y'all didn't, y'all, y'all, this is a figment of y'all imagination. Y'all didn't see Jesus. What he's saying is y'all might have saw somebody, but it wasn't Jesus. So what he's saying is somebody tricking y'all. So what we need to do, what I need to do is touch. I need to put my my fingers in there. Y'all might have saw somebody because people like to get us, but somebody trying to fool y'all. The wrong person then came to y'all and what y'all saw, they pretend to be Jesus and it really wasn't them. So that's how he dismissed it. He didn't say, oh, no, y'all just making this up trying to fool. No. Y'all saw somebody, but it wasn't Jesus. So I tell you what, let me put my fingers in the hole because ain't nobody going to go that far to put a hole in their hand. Let me stick my hand in their side because that's where they stuck him at. Ain't nobody going to go that far to almost kill themselves just to prove a point. So if I can do that, then I know for sure. I need more proof than just y'all telling me something and expecting me to believe. I mourn. And I grieve. I hurt. 
And now y'all just want all that to go away because somebody done walked in the room? It, disciples, y'all just hurting, man. Y'all just want to believe something that ain't true. Now, it happens today, too. I don't know how long Elvis was alive after he passed. If, if y'all old enough, I remember going into the grocery store and, man, it was, they saw him at the gas station and they saw him over here. Elvis was, then he was taken by, came back, right? All the tabloids had some. Marvin Gaye, he, he really didn't die. He was over here too. Pop. Anybody who died was still alive somewhere. Same type of thing. We can hold on. So that's what Thomas saying. Hey, y'all just, y'all celebrity, y'all being a fan right now. But we got to get rid of that. We need to, we need to move on, is what Thomas is saying. So when you look at it that way, you can see he was kind of thinking a little more logical than just saying, oh, but that ain't true. That ain't true. No, he, he's trying to think through this with his human brain. And you can understand why. It makes sense. I saw him die. You want to tell me he came? No, man, that don't even make sense. But notice that Jesus, he told them back, let's go to Mark 8. Mark 8, 8, 31. It said, and this is Jesus, he then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. Jesus taught that. This is one of his disciples that received the teaching. But notice when Jesus came into the room, he didn't chastise Thomas. He didn't single him out in a bad way. He walked up to him. And he said, you wanted to touch, touch. You wanted to feel, feel. You wanted to see, see. Now that you've seen, now that you've touched, stop doubting and believe. He didn't go to him and say, man, you, 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 you doing too much. I told you, this is his, one of his closest, right? This is the disciple. You built me the whole way. You didn't hear nothing I said over them three years. You, you follow me around and you're going you gonna to doubt. Man, forget you. I'm going to cut you off. I can't believe you're going to act like that. He had every right to, but he did. Now you're going to ask, dude, I got to prove myself to you. I shouldn't have to prove myself to nobody. No. He walked right up to him with grace and said, touch, feel, see. Stop doubting and now believe. So now that he told him that, he offered him some grace. He told him to believe. He approached him directly. He didn't force him to. He didn't chastise him. And look back what it says in 29. He says, then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Now, a lot of times we say, we don't want to be a doubting Thomas. We don't want to be like that. But notice when Thomas believed. He didn't say, blessed more are those who haven't seen and believed. He just said, hey, now that you have seen, believe and be blessed. And also blessed are those who have not seen and believed. The same exact blessing for the one who doubted and the one who believed without seeing. They didn't get anything different. A lot of times we read and say, oh, he was singing him out. Oh, you're going to believe because you saw, but the ones who don't seem blessed, we're going to bless them even more time. No. Blessed are you. Yeah, you doubt it, but blessed are you because now you believe. Blessed are you. You didn't doubt and you believe and didn't see, but you're also blessed. Same exact blessing. Quit beating yourself up just because you had a little hiccup. Once you believe, you are blessed. There's not a, oh, how did you believe? Oh, I, I, I just... See, people try to make you feel funny. You go to a concert. I paid. They just had all these concerts in Georgia, right? None of them I wanted to go. They, when they put the ticket price up there, I said, I don't know where somebody gave it to me. I probably, but that, that ain't nothing against us. Okay, that's just, that just me. I don't like to travel, okay? But people go crazy over these tickets. Now, somebody in here paid $2,000 to get a ticket. And you sit next to somebody who got them for free because they won. And then you'll say, how you get your tickets? They so hard to get. Oh, somebody somebody gave them to me. Mm. Man, y'all about to hear the same concert 
hear the same thing. And guess what? While the person on stage singing, they may say, hey, seat 2A, come on up here. And it's the free one. Ah, and you, she didn't even pay. I at least paid. She got her for free. It don't matter. When you in the building, you in the building. Don't nobody care how you got in the building. If you were like me back in high school, you got in the building. Did they say, nope, I'm in the building. As long as they don't come around with the flag, I'm in the building. When you in the building, you in the building. Now, don't, you can't sneak in the God's building. I'm sorry. Just, that just is what it is. The God's a little bit tighter than the Civic Center used to be. So when you in the building, it don't matter how you get in the building. It don't matter your past. It don't matter what you did. It don't matter. I was raised in the church. I was raised in the street. My mama was a preacher. My daddy was a drug dealer. It don't matter. However you got in the building, you in the building. He said, believe and be blessed. Guess what? Even for you, even for you, people going to say, how you get your blessings? Through Jesus, how you get yours? Well, my daddy, wrong. Wrong. Well, I was wrong. I've been saying wrong. I have been believing in God since I was wrong. I've been on the prayer wrong. Guess what? We got our blessings the same way. If you say anything other than Jesus, you ain't got the right blessing. And you're going to stand up there and say, Lord, guess what? I did so many works in your name. Lord, Lord, why did you not remember me? Because you didn't use Jesus. You sat there and thought it was all about you. Because this person had a past and you did. Nobody care about your past about believing all you have to do is believe now once you believe time to move it's time to get going sometimes we're afraid to admit it you know we don't want to admit that we don't understand that we don't get it that we struggle to believe you know we believe that God loves us we believe that Christ Died on, the, died on the cross for our sins. We gave our life to him. We believe that. But then here come them waves. Crash. Crash. I got to handle this. I got to handle that. I got to do this. I got to do this. People looking at me funny. People thinking about me funny. People not really accepting me like I want to be accepted. So I got to put up this ruse. Right? Pretend like I got it all together. I can't tell everybody my past because my past kind of complicated. I got to come at it wrong. You know, I got to gotta kind of cover things up because I know when I say this, people are going to be like, mm, that's interesting. Oh, you did this? That's okay. You know, they go high voice on you. You know when people do, how you doing? Where, where you coming from? Where, come? what, where was all that? High voice mean they're a little taken aback. It's easy to get people taken aback because once they find out who you really are, you really got it. But that's not the way God thinks. But it's the, also the way that we think. Because when we look in the mirror, we just don't see ourselves. We see all the things behind us. You ever notice, this is how we look in the mirror, people. We don't just see the inch that's standing there today on the last day of April in 2023. We see all the years past 2023. You ever stand in a mirror with a mirror behind you and you see image after image after image it's just, and it goes on. That's what we see. We just see us, 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 all that got us to here. We see the whole picture and we just say, oh, you got so much baggage. You got so much pain. You got so much stuff that you bringing with you just to this mirror. And you see it. So when you see it, you say, how everybody else don't see it? You just become shame and the, and, the, and the burden builds up on you to where you just got pain, shame, heaviness, weight, and it starts to buckle you, and it's hard to move. You moving, but you can't move like you want to. It becomes stiff, like you are in the mud, right? So when we think about that, the things we're dealing with, we say, God, I got to handle this. Why? Because I caused it. I can't give this to you. I, I, it's just too painful. I know you know what I got going on, but I got to deal with it. I got to handle it. I got to fix it. Yeah, there's somebody out there that loves me, but how they going to love all this? 
There's, I, I can't even love me. Not totally. Because when I feel like I've earned a little rest, I look back and I say, you don't deserve this. You don't deserve all the stuff that you got. Even when I get a little piece of something, I feel like I should be guilty. Because there's other people out there that's done a little bit more than me. And the church that made me feel guilty. Family making me feel guilty. People I love kind of put a little guilt on me. Just a little hint. Just a comment here or there. But it's enough to pinch me. Sometimes people don't realize that them pinches hurt. Right? The pinch lasts a little while. It may be quick, but it burn. I used to be bad in church. I pinched a lot. <laughs> Laugh. Right? You try not to cry and lip load up, but it, it hurt. Especially when they hit that same spot. <laughs> pinch over here this time. <laughs> so when you think about it, the world been kind of pinching you, but they add up. And the pain becomes a little bit hard, a little bit tough. And you can't move because it's hard to move through pain. You got to stop sometime to handle the pain. But haven't you stopped long enough? It's been a little while, right? So when we think about it, when we go through life and when stuff starts hitting us, we have a tendency to do something. Go to Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Now I'm here to tell you, I, I've been teaching a long time, I've been reading, I've been studying a long time, been invested a long time, been in church a long time. But man, I lean into my own understanding sometimes. And when I lean, I lean hard. I think I got, I've been in church, I know, I know, I know, I got this. And I go to how I think it should go. Because I know I got to blaze my own trail. I got to do my own thing. Sometimes I don't even know. I just ask God, why? why is this the case? Why did this happen? And I try to find out. Well, and then I divorce. Well, God knows how to, what his plan is. And it's just a way to let it go. That's just a way to, you know, get myself straight. But at the same time, I'm leaning to how I need to lean. Because I don't know. I'm hurting. So when we doubt, sometimes... I don't see how this is going to work. It's not clear to me. It's not okay. And I'm struggling with it. So I start to doubt. And I start to not see the full picture. And I want to get rid of this hurt. And I want to get rid of this guilt. And I want to get rid of this shame. And I want to get rid of this pain. And I want to make sure that I'm not in a situation to where I'm going to be in too much pain. Right? So... So when um, when God, you turn me up, you got me? There we go. When God wants us to move in a way that is right for us to move, it's hard to move in that way if we're doubting because it's hard to see what he wants us to see. What we see are these waves, and we see these things. And I'm like, God, you, you, you didn't put me here to get through this. I can't get rid of this. But then there's something that God told us in Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are greater than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. And we say, wow. So all this stuff I'm thinking when I think I got it figured out. When I think I got it together, when I think I know what I'm going to do, and I lean to my own understanding, notice it's hard to move forward when you're leaning, right? You can't walk straight and lean. When you go straight to the Lord, you got to go straight, right? Leaning and walking, it ain't working. Most people I see leaning, they done had a little bit too much, and they all over the place. They ain't going to make it, right? They usually fall down. So notice when we talk about falling down, it's usually because we lean too hard to our own understanding. 
that we just done fell by the wayside and now God got to help us up. We always think that it's the world that tripped us up. Oh, they got knocked down. We fall down, but we get up. Well, how'd you fall down? Because the world came against me. Because things got in my way. Obstacle knocked me down. Ain't nothing knocked you down but you. Same way going to keep coming. But when you start leaning to your own understanding, guess what? It's going to knock you down every single time. See, if you look at the art of just boxing, right? They always say boxing comes from the hips, but there's a certain thing in boxing called defense. That means if you ever get in the boxing ring, you can know how to box all you want. You can be the greatest boxer there ever was. Meaning throwing a punch and landing it, oh, you good. You can throw a punch. But if you can't take one, you ain't going to last long. Because any time you get into the ring, one thing I can guarantee, there have been some great fighters in our time, right? We got the Muhammad Ali's, we got the Mike Tyson's, we got the Vander Holyfield's, all these big names that even if you didn't look at boxing, you know. I guarantee you, no matter how big their name was, no matter how big the belt was on their on they chest, on their waist, when they walked into the ring to fight somebody, I guarantee you the other person fought back. The other person got a lick in. The other person hit them too. Out of all the champs that I seen at the end when they get in the microphone and say, hey, talk to us. They eye a little swole. Lip might be a little big. Now they won, but somebody pit a a little bit, right? They landed one or two. So what I'm telling you is whenever you get in a fight, the other person is going to fight. And if you start to lean, guess what? It's easier to knock you down. So you going to get hit, but when you lean into it, it's going to hurt a little worse. So when you stabilize yourself and get in your stance the way God wants you to, guess what? You can take a couple and retaliate. But when you so busy leaning, I think I need to go here. Ooh, punch. Oh, my goodness, wrong way. Go to, oh, my goodness, this man is everywhere. How many of y'all is it? It's only one, but now you're seeing four because you keep leaning to where you think you need to go. And God in your corner saying, stop leaning. Stay where I told you to stay. Follow the plan. But, Lord, I think I got it. Oh, Lord, I ain't got that one. Now you down. Get up. Get up. I don't want to get up. Why you don't want to get up? Because he's still punching. When he going to stop punching? Never. When you get up, guess who going to be there? Dog, he ain't leave. I thought I was down for the 10 count. Ain't no count. You just got to get back up. You still breathing? I am. Get up. It hurt. Stop leaning. It won't hurt. You can get through this if you stop leaning to your own understanding. But the more you lean, the more you're going to get knocked down. And the more you get knocked down, the more you got to get back up. And sometimes, y'all, it's hard to get up because you don't want to fight no more. I don't want to fight. No more. I want to stop this process. But it don't stop. You just have to learn. But guess what? When you get in there, you know how to stick your stands. And he fall down, feel good. Now you start to be a champ. Now you say, yeah, I earned the belt. And your corner is a little bit happier because ain't nobody fussing at you no more. Things done got a little quiet because you got to figure it out. You know that I got the plan. All I got to do is fight and fight and fight. And guess what? All this strength that comes from me, I'm like, how I get so strong? Where is the stamina coming from? And you look back at your corner and you just see a slight gleam. You finally figured it out. Now you can move forward. Because see, it's whenever you fighting, right? You don't want to get hit. So you can tell the person who ain't used to fighting because they do one thing always. Back up. <laughs> and that other person walk forward. And they still backing up. Uh oh, that go the wall. <laughs> Gonna be real bad when you hit that wall, cause then you can't go nowhere. So it feel good when you the one walking forward and the other person backing up, and you can beat the world off of you. You can knock back every wave that come against you because the power of God is behind you, pushing you forward. All that knowledge that he's giving you, that he says, my thoughts greater than your thoughts. 
My thoughts are also greater than those who coming against you because I know their vulnerabilities. I know when to tell you to move back. Ooh, that was a punch. Boom, there go mine. Right every single time. Body blow, head shot, side shot, back shot. Whatever you got, I can hit them wherever I need to because I can win this fight. And you know that in the end, you will be victorious. So what God says, whenever you thinking that you got it, can get it figured out. And you don't know. He says it in James 5. James 5, 1 through 8. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. And when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. So what is this telling us? We always think when we read this verse that it's talking about somebody else. Guess what? It's talking about me because I lack wisdom. It said if anyone lack wisdom, I mean, I got it in some areas, but I ain't got it all figured out. So what I need to do? Ask. And guess what he said? See, we forget about this part. Not only will you get it, but it will be without finding fault. So how irritating is it to y'all, parents in the room, to see your kid come home with a report card with D's, C's, and F's, and then you say, hey, what's up? Why you ain't get a good grade on this? Well, I don't know how to do it. Why don't you say something? Why don't you ask? Why don't you raise your hand? They got tutoring. They got this. All you had to do was ask. And if you would have said three weeks ago, I don't know how to do this, guess what? We could have got something in place. We would have gave you some wisdom and you wouldn't be getting these bad marks. But what you think God's saying to you? Why you keep falling down? All you got to do when you get in there and say, hey, he punching me. What I need to do? Duck. Oh, that's it. That's it. And you will find that he will give you the answer. And guess what? He won't say nothing to me. What's wrong with you? You been in church long enough. Why are you acting like you ain't got it figured out? You're grown, ain't you? Ain't you, don't you? Ain't you reading your Bible? Ain't you praying? Aren't you doing these things? Don't you know how to do it? Can't you do better? The world may tell you that, but God say without finding fault. All you got to do is ask, and I'm going to give it to you. And guess what? Once you get the answer, you're going to start achieving and achieving and excelling and excelling because now you know. And people only then can you move because now you got the answers. So stop doubting and believe. Stop doubting and believe that he can fix the pain. Stop doubting and believe that he can take you further. Stop doubting and believe that the world does not have all the answers. Stop doubting and believe that you can go wherever it is that he wants you to go. Stop doubting and believe that he said he would never forsake you. Stop doubting and believe that he got you. Stop doubting and believe that he's put a fortress around you to protect you from the snares of the enemy. Stop doubting and believe that all that stuff that you've learned, that it applies to you too. Stop doubting and believe that just because they look good don't mean they're better than you. Stop doubting and believe that you earned your way into the house. Why? Because it wasn't your works, it was his. So everybody who is in the house belongs in the house. No judgment in the house. Don't care how you got here. You might have got a free pass. You might have found one. You might have, somebody might have gave you it. Some others might have said they paid their way in. They didn't because there was only one price that got everybody in the house. And that was through the grace of God. So if you in the house, guess what? You belong in the house. And if you know that you belong, then act like it and start moving like you belong there because a lot of us try to sink to the back like we don't belong oh they too they too this they too that you belong in the house and when you can act like you belong in the house guess what you can move freely in the house when i go to my mama's house you know what i do i'm 46 years old i go in the kitchen open the refrigerator and get whatever i want just like it was when I was younger, if it was one piece of pie in there that my daddy was saving, he ain't here. <laughs> Mine now. I'll catch him up with it later. Just like he would fuss at me 
when I was in my room. Who had the last piece of pie? Oh, Reggie. Guess what? Now he got to call me. You ate the last piece of pie? Oh, yeah. Because guess what? I feel comfortable moving in this house. You know why? Because I belong in the house. Now, if somebody come by my house selling some service and they walk in there, oh, my friend, we got a problem. You don't belong in the house. You might belong in this area to introduce yourself, but I'll be dogged if you go in my refrigerator. We got a serious problem because you don't belong in the house. So when you know that you belong, you can move. One thing I want y'all to know, remember this, it's not about how, it's not about how you got here, it's about believing. It's not about your path, what direction you took, what state you came from, what area of the world got you here. It's all about believing. The disciples believed differently. You had 10 who believed one way, and you had one. When we talking about 11, Judas was gone, just in case y'all were trying to check. I thought it was 12. Okay, so we got that finished, okay? There was one who didn't. But notice what he said. Blessed are all of y'all, and blessed are you too, because you didn't get to touch Jesus, but you still believe. The same blessing applies to you from our Lord and Savior. So believing that we move by faith, not by sight, not by what we see. And guess what? Last thing I'll say, it's not by what you know that you move. It's not by your knowledge that you move. It's by his. So when you can move the way that he wants you to move, that means no matter what you see in front of you, on the side of you or behind you, you can move through it because he is there telling you and directing your path. And you are saying, I didn't even know there was a way out. I didn't even know I could win this fight. But you are the underdog and you are the champ because he wants you to be. And if he's in your corner telling you how to move, you can defeat any and everything that comes against you. So move in the Lord the way that he wants you to, and you will be placed in the place that he wants to place you in. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank God. Thank God. I, I told y'all I didn't, I didn't plan for it to go that way, but you know, it, it all tied together. So um, that is our series on your move. I hope that you enjoyed that series. I hope that you got something out of it. We are going to start a new series in a couple of weeks. I won't be with you next week. Um, I have a wedding to do, but um, after that, we're going to start a, a new series. So I want y'all to, to make sure that you're just staying plugged in to what God wants you to. And, man, I can't wait for you to see the mini black. I know you're already seeing it, but it's so much that's in all y'all eyes that you're going to be shocked that you're going to be like, I, I get here. Me? Of all people, I didn't see me. But, yeah, you, you, you the one, you the one. So God got something for you.